This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and we're finally back to the old classic way I was doing these beforehand, which is just the webcam looking straight down at a game board. All the information that I'm putting out onto the board is being oriented in the same way on video and is being processed the same way on video in the same orientation for you, the viewer, as I am putting it out, which makes it very easy to follow what I'm putting in what zones. I don't have to be worrying about flipping cards around in reverse order. And then it like it basically just makes orientation of what cards are going where very easy to follow, which is incredibly important now because we've got these little bastards to deal with. But anyway, what I'm going to be showing you today is a two-card, purely two-card World Chalice combo because I've seen a lot of combos on YouTube over the past couple of weeks provided by other YouTubers, which involve combos sequencing, but then they will start throwing hypothetical on hypothetical on hypothetical into the combo sequencing, changing variables in your hand as the combo goes, and it becomes very hard for you to follow if you're not someone that's overly familiar with World Chalice as a whole, as an archetype essentially, and as a deck, as, like, if you weren't already familiar with it, it becomes very hard for you to follow uh, once those hypotheticals start getting introduced. And as a player, I like to be provided the bare essentials of the baseline information of what I should be, like, striving for, what my ending fields or what my midpoint fields should be looking like. I like to be given that information and then build upon that with additional information and things like that. But that's something I'm not seeing in a lot of the combo videos I've been looking at, so... That is what I wanted to provide, was the, the bare basic World Chalice combos of not taking into account any other cards in your hand being monsters, just looking at these two cards and seeing what they do, and what what the Agent of Creation Venus and World Legacy World Chalice does with no other monsters in your hand, sets up a draw 4 combo, which includes a Diagesto Emerald and a draw 3 off Ningirsu, and it ends you with 7 cards in hand as a result, and then you have 4 Link Monsters on the field at the end point of the middle section of your combo, and it gives you a perfect segue point to go in and start melding your ending boards with things like Firewall Dragons and stuff like that. It's very, very meldable from there. So that is what I'm going to show you today. These three cards, literally not going to matter at all. We're just going to just be doing this with only these cards. Now, once you get this bare essential combo down and like start figuring out exactly how this works, then you can start introducing other monsters in your hand as variables, and then you can start making the combos better from there. And that's basically what I'm trying to cater this video to be towards. Now, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to be utilizing this extra monster zone. And so I'm saying this because every single card placement that I make into a zone with very few exception, is 100% critical in terms of where zo what zones you have to place cards in because of how the new game mechanic is structured with Link Summons and Link Markers. Everything that I place is in that zone for a specific reason, and since I'm right-handed, I'm going to be using this zone. It's no problem if you're left-handed or if this zone is taken up and you have to use this zone. Just reverse the card placements. So, like, I want to summon Venus here to use this zone, but... If you were left-handed and wanted to use this zone, or if you have to use this zone for some reason, you can summon Venus here and reverse all the card placements that I put down. It's just, it's up to you. But anyway, this combo, so now that I've been rambling for three minutes, this combo starts with Agent of Creation Venus, and you're going to normal summon it, and you're going to immediately pay 1,500 life to summon all three of your Shine Balls. And you're going to summon them into these specific places. It's actually, like, super important very early on. Then you're going to Lynx uh, with one of your, I almost said overlay. <laughs> That's going to be a ha hard habit to break. You're going to Link Summon with the Mystical Shine Ball into your Imduk. And your Imduk is going to give you an additional Normal Summon for a World Chalice card. So you're going to tribute one of your Shine Balls for World Legacy World Chalice. And now from here, you're going to be able to perform another Link Summon. And World Legacy World Chalice has been Tribute Summoned, so it's going to gain its good effect. Now you're going to go straight for Orum, the World Chalice Blade Master here, because we're trying to conserve extra deck resources uh, for this. And that's also going to be a reason why we do some other things later in the combo as well. Uh, but if you had another monster in your hand, your Imduk could trigger. But again, that's not what we're focusing on. We're not going to implement those variables into the combo. But what does trigger here, guaranteed, is your World Legacy World Chalice. And you're going to special summon Lee and Beckoned by the World Chalice from your deck into your two free main monster zones. And you're going to specifically summon them in these zones. Very important that they go in these zones. Uh, because you do not want Beckoned to be pointed to by either of Orum's 
uh, by either of Orem's markers. The Lee could go into either of these zones, honestly. It doesn't necessarily matter too much there. But so, you want these specifically to be here, and then your Lee was summoned from your deck, so you're going to be triggering its effect to get you a search, because it was special summoned. And you're going to add another Beckoned by the World Chalice from your deck to your hand. So now at this point, there is a guaranteed monster in your hand, and so at that point we are going to start using the World Chalice effects to hit the grave and summon monsters out of your hand. So it's not a hypothetical, it's actually something that we planned. So it's something that you can keep in mind. But so, we're going to use this leftover Shine Ball that's just chilling here into another Imduk in the open spot that Orem has, and then you're going to immediately link away with that Imduk and with the Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, into your Ib, the World Chalice Priestess. You're specifically going to put it in this zone because you want it to be pointing either way. Now, Imduk hit the graveyard, and Imduk has the effect that lets you special summon a monster from your hand if it's a World Chalice monster. And we have one! We searched it! So we're going to special summon Beckon by the World Chalice into an open zone. And then you're going to immediately overlay the two Beckons, and you're specifically going to put the Digesto Emerald that we're making here in this zone, the zone that Ib is opening up for you, because we want to leave this zone open specifically for the Ningirsu play we're going to set up that doesn't require any monsters in your hand for it to go off for the full three. Uh, so you're going to use Digesto Emerald here, and you're going to put back Imduk into your extra deck, and then you're going to shuffle back two of your Mystical Shine Balls. Uh, we only need two for the rest of this combo, so we don't really want to be clogging our deck with them, and we also want to just, you know, maintain some extra deck resources by putting an Imduk back, especially since we're about to make another Imduk anyway. But so you draw one card off of your Digesto Emerald, this puts you at four cards in hand now, and again, whatever this card is, it doesn't matter if it's a monster or not. It doesn't contribute to the combo in any way for what I'm trying to establish as a baseline here. But so you're going to activate the Agent of Creation Venus's effect again, paying another 1,000 life, so you've paid 2,500 life points total for this combo so far. And you're going to summon those two Shine Balls that we just put back out of your deck. Then you're going to use this Shine Ball in this zone that we specifically left open to immediately summon another Imduk there. Now the reason we do this is because now we've got the trifecta of the World Chalice monsters just chilling in these zones, and we're going to summon Ningirsu here. So it puts it to where there's already three World Chalice monsters here, that's all we have to worry about. And so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to, this reason we specifically put Venus in this zone, you might be wondering why that was important, but this is why. Because we're going to specifically use the Venus and the Emerald, we don't want to use the Shine Ball here. We're going to make Proxy Dragon, or if you wanted to, you could make another World Chalice Eeb. Uh, you can make another Eeb the World Chalice Priestess, but personally, Proxy Dragon comes out in two days. So, like, unless you have some niche-ass locals on Wednesday night, uh, before the Megatons are legal, you can make Proxy Dragon. Uh, but so we're gonna make Proxy Dragon here, and the reason that we wanted to, uh, to do that was because we wanted to keep the zones open that Ib points to in one way or form. Like, it, it's, it's kind of important. It's a lot less important if you're making Proxy Dragon than Ib. Uh, but you definitely need to keep this Shine Ball on the field, and you have to keep a zone open for it to be summoned into. Uh, so, like, if you had used, uh, if you had had Venus here, uh, then you would have been able, you would have, like, had a different, like, situation going on in terms of what zones would have been, uh, like, taken up and things like that. But so, you are going to use the Mystical Shine Ball that is on your field, and you're going to summon a Link Spider with it. Uh, you could summon another Imduk if you want to, if you're playing three of it. This is the second one that we shuffled back, so I mean, like, if you're playing three Imduk, it could be an Imduk. This could be Ib, this could be Imduk. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's a Link 2 monster and a Link 1 monster. The Link 1 monster basically has to be, like, Link Spider or Imduk. Uh, but essentially, that's not what we're worried about here. But you're gonna make these two monsters that are in those zones into your Ningirsu! And so then your Ningirsu is gonna trigger, and you have your three World Chalice monsters here, so you're going to draw three cards. So from here, you basically, this is where the basic essentials of this combo ends. This is where the baseline point ends. Everything from here becomes incredibly freeform and becomes incredibly subjective to what you want to be doing to build your combos up from this point. And you've just drawn four cards. The chances of you not drawing a monster in those, any monster, because you have Lee engraved that you can use to send a monster to your graveyard to add Lee to hand, and then Lee can be summoned from your hand as a World Chalice monster. That, that's all things that start implementing themselves into your combos further down the line from here. But this is the middle ground point that I wanted to get you to with just those two cards to show you that you don't need to implement any any hypothetical monsters in your hand to still yield a amazing amount of value. Essentially what I would consider like full value out of your Ningirsu play 
and the fact that you've also like just you've done a huge amount with your agent of creation Venus you've done a lot of things you've you've summoned five shine balls this turn you've melded a wonderful board the orm hasn't used its effect yet so you can use that to bring back cards to your advantage there's all these things and factors that start playing into how this can further go I mean these two cards can become a firewall dragon uh, because it's the perfect like link based number for it at this point if you have other monsters in your hand then you can start summoning them from your hand into the like firewall zones you can use Orum to bring back cards like your Ningirsu if you overlay away with it or overlay oh my goodness if you link summon away with it into firewall there's a lot of things that you can do uh, starting from like just assessing your hand and seeing what monsters you have there so this is the point I wanted to get you to. If you guys like this sort of video and want to see more just baseline essential combos without any other additional hypotheticals like monsters in hand being put into it, then you can definitely let me know in the comments down below and I'll be very happy to like handle it. Like World Chalice is like one of my favorite decks in terms of how it was designed as I may have already said in the video. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you like this video, then give it a like. If you're new here, then consider subscribing. Helps out the channel a lot if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh content of a certain caliber that I consider to be acceptable and okay and some people seem to think is good then definitely enter the subscriber category on this channel if you want to see more it would definitely help out a ton but other than that as always links are in the description to my Facebook and patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly patreon is the best way to do so helps me be able to continue making content of a certain quality getting any time for it all that sort of stuff it helps me be able to improve equipment for making better content it gets you into a monthly raffle giveaway for at least 10 packs of the newest set based off patreon performance essentially that is going to be going up it will never go down but it will go up might be up to a full box this month not sure yet but it's definitely at least 10 packs i'll let you know more on that later but other than that as always special thanks to travis miller iradium jay garcia yuki phoenix and troy perkins as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on patreon this month you guys help out a ton i cannot express how much you assist this little project and this little hobby of mine in terms of trying to make content and bring it out to you guys and you have my eternal gratitude as you already know and my deepest thanks but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as i've already said thanks for your time as usual guys and take care i will see you in the next video